to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Today I looked outside to check out the waves, and I would say they're almost up to my ankles. So kind of small kind waves today here in the South Shore, but beautiful day. The trade winds are blowing over the Koalau Range, and you know, Waikiki is the sunny side of the island. If you go to the windward side, that's the jungle side, lots of rain over there, and then the Koalaus uh, pick up and make their own weather. And so in the mornings we look out and we see the, the we see the uh, rainbows over the ocean. In the evenings we see the rainbows over the koalas, the big the m- big mountains that were basically a crater. And uh, and but the waves today are kind of small kind. But I'll still go out there and do some stand up paddling every day. I get out for at least an hour or two hours and get some some water time in. It keeps us keeps me alive. It keeps me feeling um, keeps me keeps me from. Um, I don't know. Cindy knows. My wife knows. If I haven't surfed in two days, I'm not just not the same person. And, you know, our, my friend Tony Orban, he has a patch on his motorcycle vest that says, uh, seven days without prayer makes you weak. That's the way I feel about surfing. And that's why you should feel, too. You, we need to have our daily prayer time. And we're so gifted by the church, the rosary, the Eucharist, the liturgy of the hours, so many uh, prayer traditions, Lectio Divina that we can, uh, we can paddle out. Even today when there's no waves at all, I remember about five years ago paddling out on a day just like today. There was no waves at all. Just the keiki, just the children between four and 13 years old were out in the, in the, in the lineup. And I paddled by them. Hey, Uncle Bear, as I, as I paddled by them. And I went out. As I passed them, I could see about a quarter of a mile out uh, a pod of what we call spinner dolphins. They're not like spinner sharks. On the East Coast, these are spinner dolphins, and they were just going crazy. There must have been 40 of them. I paddled out there, and I knew that if I paddled on one side and then back to the other side, I could herd the I could herd this pod right back into the children. And I did that. I, I paddled on one side and then the other, and they and it came right in through Queen Surf Break, and the children, oh, Uncle Bear, Uncle Bear, they were so excited. And then they kind of chased these dolphins, or the cho- dolphins chased them. They played with the dolphins as they paddled a good mile with them before uh, coming back to shore. In your life, when you feel like the surf is flat and the Holy Spirit's not up to anything, paddle out anyway. You don't feel like going to Mass? Go to Mass anyway. You don't feel like opening the Bible and reading? Open it anyway, because it's at those times. Every athlete knows. I know when I was training for my black belt, the days that I was the most weary and didn't feel like it, if I showed up, uh, on those days, I would have the best workouts. It's people who, who do circuit training or CrossFit or do bicycling, they know the same thing. The days you don't feel like it, if you just start things in motion, um, your blood starts pumping and you, you, get, you, you have life come into you and you have a great workout. Our prayer life is, is, is more essential than that, and it's just like that. Paddle out into the deep, and you'll be surprised what the Lord might have for you. So an hour of prayer every day, man. If you're not doing an hour of prayer, you're basically a poser. You need to be living what you've been, what you were, what you need to live your Catholic faith so that you can protect uh, your family and 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 get receive direction from the Lord for them. Today we have as our guest, uh, as our victim, I mean our guest of the hour, <laughs> Willie Alvarado. He's one of the men that helps ha- help to start uh, the the big Orlando Men's Conference in Orlando, Florida. And so we're going to talk story. All you people that think he's so holy, we're going to find out the truth about him. But Willie, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm glad to be here, Bear. Hey, I warned you. This is a different kind of show, right? You did. <laughs> so, yes, and, you I, did. And, and I know you mentioned that you're, you're a golfer. And uh, let's just compare notes. Tell me about one of your worst uh, golf outing experiences. Oh, my goodness. That's an easy one. We were up in New York on vacation, up in kind of the mountain mountainous area. So this you know golf course, which I'm from Florida, so I'm not used to playing with any kind of elevation in golf. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> literally literally <laughs> four putted a green <laughs> because of the uh, uh, the incline, you know, the incline there. So that was probably my worst golf well, okay, hole so, and golf round everywhere. <laughs> so, you know, like golfers like to show one another up, right? That's right. Let me tell you my great golfing story i mean i'm a really 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 bad golfer when i 
the, I think the first time I took a club and swung it, it went 300 yards, right? So I figured, oh, you just swing this thing as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. Never has happened again. My my, the, the, the ball goes in any direction it wants to go. But I, I was c competing in a tournament a long time ago. When I say competing, I don't. Even, that's not even right. I, I'm just so bad. I'm so bad that I, 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 twice in a row I was co-champion of uh, Deloitte Haskins and Deloitte Touche's golf outing for their alumni. But it's because they put the best guys with the worst guys. Right. You know, in best ball. I That's was right. the worst. So I always got to surf. I always got to golf with the best guys. But I had on my clubs two years in a row champion on my golf golf That's right. So my son, for 25 years of his life, thought I was an excellent golfer. Wonder why I never gave him any hints or taught, <laughs> taught him. And finally, he, I, I had to confess. But, but no, I remember golfing and, and, I, and, I, and I won the closest to the pin competition, you know, on a little three hole. But it took me seven putts to get in because I went right off. Uh, right off into the, into the uh, a, a sand trap, and you know I mean, I'm, I'm, that's how bad. So I think I'm I'm a much worse golfer than yours. I was gonna say you got me there. <laughs> I've yeah. never set a seven putt at a green. <laughs> I one up you. I mean I'm really bad. I really, but that's why it's addicting, right? Because every now and then you get one good. That's right. And now I could do that every time. That's the way it is with surfing too. Mm -hmm. But Willie, uh, we want to know a little bit uh, more about your golf. No, we'd like to know a little bit more about your. You know, everybody's on a journey. Tell us a little bit about the the quest that you've been on and your 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 walk with the Lord. Yeah, sure, sure. I, you know, so I was I was raised Catholic, so um, you know, diehard Catholic mom, diehard Catholic grandmother. You know, dad not so much as I was growing up, but you know, recently he's definitely come around. Um, uh, you know, went to a high school in Lake Placid, Florida, which was a really small high school, University of Florida for college, uh, MBA at University of Florida, and then settled down here in Orlando. Uh, working with Arthur Anderson. Some oh of you may no! Remember. Are you serious? <laughs> For those I, of I you, I heard your Deloitte reference <laughs> earlier. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! So those of you, no one really gets this unless you work for one of the big four CPA firms. <laughs> That's right. So you were with Arthur Anderson. I was with their business consulting division. That's right. Uh, uh, you know, they spun off and became Accenture, right? Um, yeah. Uh, and ever since then, I, I joined Pertivity, which was a spinoff of Anderson back right. in, gosh, 2002. So Okay, let me yeah. just tell you. I know Deloitte has we were Deloitte, Haskins, and Sells. We were Haskins and Sells, then Deloitte, Haskins, and Sells, and then Deloitte, Touche. But I remember when we would have our – I interviewed with Arthur Anderson. Oh, wow. And they told me I'd have to shave off my hippie beard, so I went mm -hmm. with Deloitte instead. That's right. But, uh, <laughs> but I remember after uh, our, our, you know, when we'd be done with an I was on the audit side. Uh, when we'd be done with an audit, we'd have an audit party. And when we would go out, we'd always have a lot of fun, but also always say we were from Arthur Anderson. Uh, so that you guys can get played, get played for everything. That's great. But if people who don't know, if you've worked for one of the big four, you have been to school, man. You, you have, you bet you put your, just to be able to be hired by them is amazing. And then yeah. to work with, you know, that's where you get your education. It's just amazing commitment to excellence. And, you know, I'd walk down the hallways and keep thinking one of these days they're going to find out about me and fire me, you know, because <laughs> so many brilliant people there, you know. Yeah, yeah. But tell me, tell, yeah, tell, us, tell us more about your, your walk with the Lord when you, uh, you, 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 were, you, you were raised in the church. But when did you begin to develop a personal, a real personal commitment and, 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 and relationship with Jesus? Yeah, yeah. I would say high school, early high school. Um, you know, so, so I was always, you know, an altar boy growing up and all that fun stuff. But really, I'd say 10th grade is I, I just remember really wanting to find out more about the faith. Um, started really opening up the Bible at that point in time and, and spending, you know, at least weekly, you know, time with the Bible and just, you know, again, learning, learning more and more. Uh, so I would say 10th and 11th grade is probably when I really got serious about my faith. It's such a critical thing for those fathers and, uh, that are listening right now. It's at that age, that kind of age of awakening, you kind of the universe begins to kind of open up to people. And it, that trajectory that set at that age changes everything for people the rest of their life. So it's at that age, then maybe fathers need to uh, go on a retreat with their son or bring them to a men's conference or something like that. But that's a real critical time. But so when you began to uh, press in more deeply to the Lord, did you have a personal experience with him or did that come in time or was it? Uh... I, I did. I did. Um, so one, one time I remember it was the very first time I, I went to adoration. And that was at the end of my 10th grade year. 
And um, I went with my grandmother. Like I said, she's a diehard Catholic. I really didn't honestly know what I was doing there. Um, personally, at the time, I didn't believe in the whole, you know, this wafer is God, right? I, I didn't even believe that at the time, um, you know, coming to believe it. But I tell you, sitting there, uh, just the comfort and warmth that I felt, I knew I con- instantly converted at that point in time. And I was, you know, again, a diehard after that in terms of this is definitely Christ here in front of me. So that, that, was, that was the moment. So you experienced your personal encounter with the Lord was in the presence of the Eucharist. We're talking with Willie Alvarado. He's uh, w- the founder and one of the leaders of the Orlando Men's Conference. It's coming up any day now. Uh, so we're going to talk a story a little bit more about that. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My producers tell me I have to do certain things. And one of them is I want to thank personally Bettina at Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. They're one of our sponsors. Tom Gripe is uh, the CEO there. We met him at Napa Institute and we just had a wonderful connection. And they said, you know what? Notre Dame Federal Credit Union is going to help sponsor the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show. So they're one of our two sponsors. And But Bettina in particular... I wanted to go, okay, so if they want to sponsor us, i got to make sure that they're, they're good at what they do. So I was in Hawaii. We were shooting Long Ride Home uh, Season 5 or something here. It still hasn't aired, by the way. But I, I needed to get another car because we were doing all this. We had 20 people here. We needed uh, another little family car here. So I was buying a used car. And while I was shooting Long Ride Home, uh, in between, you know, and it's 12, 16-hour days, and in between sets, I'd get a phone call, I'd get an email, get a text. Bettina made it happen for me. So it's just so cool. She's the real thing. Uh, and it just indicates to you the quality of the people. We've been to the credit union there after they, uh, after we went to a Notre Dame football game. So we could tell you, if you go to our website, deepadventure.com, you can click on the Notre Dame Federal Credit Union link and go there. They help people all over. the. They can do a home loan in Florida, a home loan in Hawaii, a car loan in Alaska. They can do it anywhere. So use them and, and, and be blessed to use them. They're just You just feel the Catholic faith there, the, 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 the love that they have there. And also we want to thank Solidarity Health Share because uh, a couple of my family members are actually members of that program. They are committed to um, health, health uh, it's like a health insurance, for, but uh, uh, c- committed to doing it according to Catholic teaching. And they've been really excellent also. So we want to thank both of our sponsors. Go to our website, deepadventure.com. You'll find their links at the bottom. We're talking with Willie Alvarado, who is uh, a flatlander. From Florida, uh, my wife Cindy and I, the first time I took her to Hawaii, she had to admit she'd never hiked up a mountain before. I think once she hiked up a little cliff in Costa Rica so she could go surfing. But uh, So Willie's will telling me his, his story of uh, golfing in New York and having to deal with a little bit of an incline. But, uh, you know, we like Flatlanders too, so welcome. And by the way, you know, I live 40 miles from Orlando. I live in Cocoa Beach part of the year, so. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. So welcome back to the show. So Willie. Uh, so you began to have a deeper, you had an experience with the Lord with the Eucharist. And then wh- how did that lead you? What happened from there when you were like uh, in 10th grade? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. End of 10th grade, um, you know, going into, you know, 11th, 12th grade. And back then, you know, I was, a, I was a jock, right? So I was quarterback of the football team, you know, one of the starters on the basketball team and, and starters on the baseball team. So, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, grapple with all of that, right. Um, the popularity, but also, you know, trying to stay true to my faith. But yeah, I think I got more serious at that point in time, you know, as much as a high school student can. Right. And then, um, you know, leading up into, into college, um, throughout college, never missed a Sunday mass. You know, I was very dedicated from that perspective, even as, you know, I met my future wife at the time in Gainesville at university of Florida, but, um, yeah, would always drag her along to mass too. And so, so, so from then forward, obviously I would just, I was just taking my faith a little bit more seriously at that point. So what did you end, end up doing? Marrying this woman? I did. I did. <laughs> when, so tell us about, tell us that story. So you, you, and then you, you have family and tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, uh, we met, she was actually still a freshman, but it was towards the end of her freshman year. I was al- already three years into, into, uh, university of Florida there as an, uh, as an engineering student. Uh, so we met, um, you know, dated for 
basically a couple of years. And then a couple of years in, we decided we were going to eventually get married, but obviously we wanted to graduate first. So uh, in 1998, uh, we graduated from University of Florida in May, both of us. I, I graduated with my MBA and she graduated with her, with her criminal justice degree. And we moved to Orlando. I started my job with Arthur Anderson. And that December, um, we got married. So that's that's kind of our story. And then babies came soon after that, or yeah, well, pretty soon. We uh, we did struggle with infertility uh, for a while there. Um, so my son Alex was born about four years into our our marriage after a couple of miscarriages, and then um, we adopted a girl after that. Um, so so my daughter uh, Gianna, she's uh, she's ten years old now. Uh, my son's now at, at Bishop Moore Catholic High School. He's a freshman. Is he playing football? Does he like sports? He is not into sports. That's so cool. So, That's, so cool. That? <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. He heard about your golfing for you know four putting a green, and so that's it for me. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Well, sports. actually, the golfing he is good at, but he doesn't golf at, at the school there. But he is good at the golfing. He just never took up basketball, baseball, or football. Well, so, a lot uh, of young people are really yeah. into individual sports. You know, my the right. skater, surfer thing oh, is yeah. really big. And you know, in Hawaii, although we have tremendous football players here too. Uh, so, sure. so tell me about what was it that uh, at some point you began to think we need to have a men's uh, a men's conference. Did you have a men's group initially first, or how did that? What was the vision? What was the need you saw? What was the purpose of that? Yeah, yeah. So at the time, um, so um, this is the time period is basically 2010, 2011. Um, you know, we have a nice young young Catholic adult group at our parish, Holy Redeemer, uh, in Kissimmee, Florida. Um, or at the time, we we I got involved with the young Catholic group there, and it was a great group. Um, so yeah, I did have a you know some camaraderie there. Um, we did break out and start having um, some small men's group sessions as part of that group. Uh, but um, really when we got serious about a conference was uh, 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 Eugene DeMasa, who's a friend who moved from Jacksonville. While he was in Jacksonville, you know, during that time period, he was actually helping with their men's conference up in Jacksonville. So when he moved here to Holy Redeemer in Kissimmee, um, you know, he was asking, do we even have a men's conference? And there really wasn't at the time a, a, a men's conference in Orlando. So he approached me and said, hey, you know, what do you think about getting one started? And absolutely, you know, I jumped on that. So the, the two of us, we sort of um, started to gather, you know, momentum there in terms of planning for a men's conference, starting to do some research of, OK, what other men's conferences are around Um you know, uh, we found out there was one in Miami, there was one in West Palm Beach, there was one in, you know, obviously in Jacksonville, there's one in, that the Tampa group did, but there was never one in Orlando. So we finally, in 2014, approached uh, the Diocese of Orlando. Um, so we met with uh, one of the chancellors there, and then eventually the bishop, and they were fully on board. Uh, so we, we uh, they, they gave us their blessing, and we, you know, organized a group and got one going. You know, Bishop Noonan is beautiful, isn't he? He's fantastic. Yeah, we have him. We have him in. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, I was going to say a great staff too. Everyone we've dealt with there at the diocese is is phenomenal. Yeah, the the bishop uh, uh, appears in uh, season three of Long Ride Home, uh, okay. which we're season two is about to come out. So season three we haven't even edited yet. But when we went up there, we wanted to interview him ab about a, a painting that Tom equals uh, Archbishop Wenske's one of Archbishop Wenske's good friends. Who, by the way, Archbishop Wenske rode with us down in the Key West. Nice. Uh, or we rode with him, I should say. But, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so there was this painting. So we got to go visit with Bishop Noonan about a painting that Tom Equals did on the virtues. And so we got to go visit with Bishop Noonan about that. And what a beautiful man. When we were done, uh, we, knelt that we, we asked if he would give us a blessing. So we all knelt down. And, uh, he, oh, you're going to kneel. I'll kneel too. So he knelt down with us. And I thought, what a beautiful, uh, in a nutshell, that's who Bishop Noonan is. It's a very beautiful, humble uh, but but very good good man. So we love we Absolutely. love we love him, and you know I love being part of the uh, the um, the ch the church there, Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church in uh, in the Atlantic. So uh, we kind of like here in in Hawaii. The, uh, there's a church right next to me. I actually can look down where the altar is. I'm on the 25th floor of this condo in Waikiki, the only condo on the beach, and I can see St. Augustine's. But I'm a I'm a Benedictine oblate, so I go up to the monastery on the North Shore. Uh, about half the time to go to my Sunday mass, but so grateful for, for our experience in the diocese of Orlando. So, you know, the thing is, is people are listening. What is the date of this, this upcoming event, by the way? Yeah, it's coming up Saturday, March 23rd. Now I remember 
probably seven years ago or eight years ago, seven years ago probably, I heard about a men's conference in Tampa, Florida. I'd never heard of a Catholic men's conference. So we, um, so I flew out to Tampa just to go to that conference from Hawaii, and I was just blown away by the That Man Is You program. So I go right. back to Hawaii, I talk to my bishop here, and we started three uh, That Man Is You programs. But they go, hey, no one's going to show up for this. All the Filipinos aren't going to come, come. They're too macho. So they come, and you know what we did? The very first, uh, it was more of a, it wasn't, First one wasn't, a, it was more of a little, wasn't a huge conference, but more like a Saturday morning. We taught them how to fight Eskrima. You know Eskrima, stick fighting, Filipino oh, yeah. stick fighting. So we just beat each other up and then everyone goes, oh, I guess it's okay to go to a men's, men's meeting. Men's, so. <laughs> you know, I was probably at that men's conference. So yeah, I've in been Tampa. to the Tampa one probably three or four times. Yeah. Yeah, it was wonderful. I remember I walked in, they, they go, uh, hey, Jamie, he's the, he's the DJ at the Tampa Catholic Station. Hey, Jamie, there's a Eucharistic adoration over here. And they go, hey, Bear. There's confession over here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I wasn't sure what they were saying. But we're talking with Willie Alvarado. If people want to go to the, 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 the men's event, the Orlando co uh, conference, even if it says it's full, they should still go? Is, it, is there still room? Oh, there's there's room. Yeah, we, we hosted at Holy Family Catholic Church in Orlando, which is a great campus. It's, it's a huge campus. So, there, the, yeah, there's definitely room. What's mm -hmm. the website? So the website I would send you to would be orlandodiocese.org. And if you want to be more specific, put .org slash rise up. Rise up. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Convention. We're talking with Willie Alvarado, one of the leaders of uh, the men's conference in Orlando. And we got to tell you the Rise Up Conference. And all men are leaders. So uh, come back. We're going to share with you how you can uh, activate your, uh, your leadership. Aloha, and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. I want to invite you uh, men to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and join Bear's Man Cave. It's just, I don't know, um, it's just a very unique uh, opportunity. What happens is you go to our website, you, jo you join there, and then we give you access to a secret Facebook group, and there you're going to find other men, like-minded men. Uh, it's been just really gritty what happens there. The men open up and really share with each other uh, the challenges that they have. And then we, we challenge each other, we equip, we, we mobilize men to action. A lot of the men in, the, in Bear's Man Cave are in turn uh, starting their own uh, men's group. And there's so many different types of men's groups. There's the That Man Is You program that I'm a big fan of. But there's some men that just wouldn't come to a, uh, um, especially if they've been on church or something, they wouldn't come to a church function. But it's a lot of our men uh, just use my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, which is kind of designed for this. And they have a men's group on their back porch, or they'll have a meet at a uh, at a bar someplace, or someplace for breakfast. And but a lot of the men will have a have a meeting in the on, on their deck, and they'll have a shot of whiskey, have one of our Bears Man Cave cigars, the Seven Virtue Cigar Sampler that we have, and uh, they talk story with each other. They going through a process through the book on the virtues. But they really open up and, 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 and get to know each other. And it bears man cave. We're there to help you uh, respond to that nudge that you're getting in your heart. And every two to three weeks, we have a Zoom video chat where we'll have uh, dozens of men, uh, a dozen men or so meet so we can see each other on screen. And I, I kind of do a little opening and we talk story for a bit. And then we go through uh, the Deep Adventure book ourselves. So it just there's nothing else like it. It's a secret Facebook group. You can't join it. Through Facebook, you got to go to our website, deepadventure.com. And women, it's a great way to kind of give your husband the nudge to come join us, too. So think about that. We're, we're visiting today with our co-adventure guide, Willie Alvarado, who's a leader uh, of the uh, Rise Up Men's Conference in Orlando. But all men are leaders. Look behind you. There's someone following you. If you're of confirmation age or older, someone's following you. Question is, where are you leading them? Uh, Willie, what is the big need now? What do you see as the challenge uh, men are facing, or what is God? What is God saying to men today? Yeah, well, you know, obviously one one angle here here is the you know the church is under attack, right? We all know that. We see all these you know bills going through Congress and and, and all the state bills, and so you know in general as Catholics we've got to rise up and 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 you know it's time to you know time to fight back, which we have. I think we started back with. You know the, the the Obama days, right? Um, with the health care plans, and and now you know now in in, in terms of um, you know some of these uh, 
you know, uh, some of the pro-life bills uh, or abortion bills coming through. So we just have to rise up. And it, as, as men, we really have to lead the way. Um, you know, women have been leading far too long in the in the Catholic faith. We, we men have to stand up and take the lead. There's lots of statistics out there that, you know, if you you want your children to, to live a Catholic faith when they are older, the men have to be involved. They have to be the example. The women can't, you know, can't be the example necessarily. Um, you know, the that. statistics but, that we've heard is that that if a woman is very devoted and the husband isn't, uh, maybe 20 to 35 percent of those right. children will continue in their faith. If the man is involved with that, then it goes up to over 80 percent that the, That's right. the children That's will right. stay involved. But the shocking thing is this that if only the man is taking the children to the church and the mother is not involved, the statistic doesn't change. It's still about 80% will stay in their faith. So men, um, it's your kuleana, as we say in Hawaii. It's your stewardship. It's your responsibility. It's your anointing. It's your gift. It's your adventure to lead your family uh, in, in their spiritual journey. Yeah, yeah. And, and probably the other thing I would say, Bear, is it's kind of like what you're doing with your program. You know, the way men can get started is not going to be through a, you know, a you know, Bible study or, or, or devotion. It really starts socially. Right. And that's how I got, I kind of got started with, uh, with the group that I was in. Uh, most of the men's group that I'm, that I'm aware of get started uh, more successfully if they're, if they start as more of a social, you know, friendships, and then it grows into the more spiritual, you know, friendship, friendship. So what we try to teach at the Rise Up Conference, too, is just ways to just get involved, you know, you know, get involved in your parish, get involved with a men's group, even if it's just socially, even if you only go to theology on tap, you know, at the bar and you don't do anything else, get started. And then from there, your faith will obviously grow and you'll get more comfortable. But, but it's like this. Spiritual type. It's like this. I had, I had a buddy once that said, hey, my psychiatrist, psychologist, he wasn't really even a buddy, just someone that I knew. My psychologist said, I need to get a, I need a hobby. So I'm going to take up surfing. So can I go to Hawaii with you guys next time you go? And I'm like, you know, surfing isn't a hobby. It, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's something so much more than that. I mean, you're, face, you're, you're out there facing sometimes adversity, but you're with your friends. And what happens, it's not that you need social involvement. Men need to be like, mm, well, fellowship means fellows in the same ship paddling, as we say in Hawaii, ho'olei, paddle, your, paddle your, your paddles together strongly. It's when men get together to do something, like Knights of Columbus, for example. When you get together to do something, it forges relationships. And one of the things you can do is start a, a men's group, you know, whether it's in the church through That Man Is You or some other program, or it's just getting guys together every two weeks for coffee. We just have a rule, though. When we sit down to have a have one of these events, we don't talk about politics. We don't talk about sports, maybe a little bit of sports. We don't sit there and complain uh, about whatever was the last thing we saw in the news. We are there to talk about Jesus and to go deeper with Jesus. And then if we see a need, not to talk about it, but to do something about it. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, fully 100% agree. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to, uh, right now, there are men that say, oh, man, I sure wish I had a men's group in my church. Well, why don't you? You know? Yeah, yeah. It, and, God, and, we, and we devoted, go, go ahead, Bear. Yeah, go if ahead. God's putting that nudge on you, then it's you he's challenging to do it. That's right. Yeah. And last year's conference was devoted to that. So we had breakout sessions and, and, and more talks about how do you begin a men's group? What are the resources you have available to you? We have a great, um, you know, a couple of great programs here. You've mentioned that man as you, you know, many times they were obviously involved in that discussion, but yeah, we, that was what we devoted last year's conference to, in addition to some of the speakers, uh, you know, how do you get one started? How do you seek one out and join one? You know, there, we also talked a lot about the existing men's groups, such as, you know, that man is you Knights of Columbus and, and many others. Right. So the so fathers was, of St. Joseph last time. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we need but but it's it's like men need to gather together and 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 and, and challenge and encourage each other. Um, and we can't do it alone. There like I would say there's the walls of Jericho that has to come down. You know, the the walls that separate us need to come down, but then we need to be involved in rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem like the, Nehemiah. We need to start being oh, I have a group of men that we're in a group text together. Someone will call and say, "Hey, I'm really dealing with something here and we'll we'll jump in and pray." We'll might give them a few words of encouragement, but basically these ask we're asking each other to to pray for each other. So, um, so it, again, the conference date is what, and how do they get, how do they find out information? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's March 23rd. It's a Saturday, uh, 8.30 to roughly 3 p.m. at Holy Family. I would go to orlandodiocese.org slash rise up. Uh, you could also just do a Google search um, or even an Eventbrite search on rise up uh, Orlando Men's Conference and you'll you'll be able to sign up there. And who's going to be the speakers this year? Yeah, so the speakers this year, uh, so Justin Fatika, uh, who happens oh, that, to be that the ro- same... That rookie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love him, man. I love him. Justin yeah, yeah. And so uh, so he happens to be doing the Tampa Men's Conference, actually. Um, I can't remember if it was last week or this weekend. I think it's actually this weekend. Um, so he's going to be doing both Tampa and Orlando this year. We had Father Larry Richards last year. Another who, rookie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, re- so I, rem- I remember going yeah. into the Tampa ev- event, and, and Father Larry was one of the speakers, and, and about five or six women came into the back of the room, and like they quickly kind of crawled out because he was like <laughs> lowering the boom on the men and just no uncertain terms, you know, kind of taking us out <laughs> to the woodshed. You know, that's funny. I think that's the same one where Dr. Ray was there, which is, I think, why the women oh, were there, because they love Dr. Ray. Yeah, I love, I love Dr. Ray, too. I've been on his show, and and we were together in the Napa Institute. You can't sit down and talk with him without, you know, you can never take anything he says seriously, you know. Just just another man's man. And, you know, if you ever give him a hug, the guy's strong, dude. Yeah. He, he definitely works out, but what a really bad sense of humor. <laughs> it's kind of what they call, what do they call it, a dad, dad humor, you know. That's very, right. very painful to be around him. But, <laughs> yeah. So I heard there's a big petition going on. Someday you guys might invite the bear to come out. You never know. Hey, yeah, absolutely. We're, we're start. Absolutely. We're starting a petition up. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a social media viral thing. So you're not going to have much choice. We're talking there with Will, Willie, Will, Willie Alvarado. He is, he is the guy that the Lord kind of pushed out. Uh, you know, it's kind of like I remember the, the last words of my grandfather were a bus. And I, I think it's sometimes it's like that when you're uh, when you're involved in new evangelization, you go, you kind of like, you, you feel a little nudge and you step out and then you're just flattened because you've got, once you're involved in the new evangelization, watch out. It's just, it, it becomes a real riot, a real adventure. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you guys to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you'll find my books and some long ride home motorcycle gear there and uh, and all kinds of stuff. So go to our website and subscribe to our our newsletter, and then that means what happens is if you subscribe to our newsletter, you get a YouTube version of the radio show sent to you. That's video version of the radio show sent to you the morning before it airs on EWTN. So uh, so it's something then that you can share with your friends and become part of our evangelistic outreach. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have such good news for you guys. Uh, Long Ride Home Season 1, the all 10 episodes is re-airing on the EWTN network. Starting, It's already started, I think, on the network again. In preparation for Season 2 airing uh, sometime uh, <clears throat> in about two and a half months. Uh, season 1, <clears throat> we roll thunder on our motorcycles from Cocoa Beach all the way to Monterey. And we take a... Part of that trip, we go into the Big Bend country of Texas, which, by the way, you can't get to the Big Bend country of Texas by just passing through. you got to take a big detour, and the road keeps getting narrower and narrower and narrower, but more and more and more beautiful. And that's what our life is meant to be. God wants you to get off the freeway, take the detour, take the narrow way. Wide is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow is the way that leads to life. The Christian community in the in the first century was called the people on the way so get get walk on the narrow path and and really find out what your adventure is when we rode into the big bend country our cell phone said mexico you know we were right there where pancho villa crossed the border when he was being chased by blackjack pershing so get off the broad way get into the narrow way and that's where you find excitement here's what happens you have a big river and then you a narrow gorge it's so much more fun in that narrow gorge when things narrow up and the, the, the waterfalls and the raft is exploding over these, the, you know, the different areas of the river. Follow the narrow path and a great adventure opens up. And we want to let you guys know, Long Ride Home is one of only two shows in ADA Pachin history that's been on the Armed Forces Network and also one of only two that, that is available on iTunes and Prime Video and Google Play. So... It's very, the Long Ride Home is a series and it's meant to be watched in sequence. So watch it on EWTN. But if you, if you miss it, uh, one of the episodes, 
Go to iTunes and buy the series because that helps support our next show. And then you can watch it with your, you can power watch it with your family. And it's, it's just a great adventure. Season two, we ride with Archbishop Wenske down to Miami, then turn around and go all the way up to Allentown, New Jersey for a, me, a call to the wall men's rally. <clears throat> so uh, be part of the pack. And you can do that by, by going to the, to the website and joining. We're talking with Willie Alvarado, who's promised to have me be one of their, you know, so many people promise that I'm going to be the next speaker. And then they look more into my history and they go, I, I don't think so. You know, but, <laughs> but he is, he's, I, I love men like Willie because it, you know, it doesn't take someone, it just takes a guy that's willing. And then the Lord will, it's not like, Oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not holy enough. It just takes someone that's willing. And then God will propel you into starting a men's group or a men's conference. And the beauty of it is, is because the Lord's blessing is flowing through your ministry. You pick up a lot of grace and blessings in the process. You're kind of like a conduit of God's blessing, and you grow. Tell me what the personal experience has been in your life, a personal growth, as you have developed this journey over the last six or seven years or ten years, uh, developing the the Rise Up Men's Conference in Orlando, which is March 23rd. Starts at what time, Willie? It'll be uh, eight eight thirty. So seven thirty breakfast and registration. Eight thirty start. And then it ends at what time? Uh, we'll be done with Mass uh, by about 3 o'clock. And just looking at you, I know there must be confessions available. Confessions are available, <laughs> yeah, from 10 to 1. So, yeah, adoration, confessions, the works. Awesome. Just sounds like a great day. But tell me what, uh, uh, what I'd like to do is ask you, as you begin to proceed with this, how did you grow as a person? Well, how did the Lord form your faith and form you, and what was the effect on your family? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I, I think there's two things that kind of, you know, between this this men's conference uh, and the committee that we formed uh, to kind of help, you know, help with this, uh, along with joining the Knights of Columbus as well. I joined the Knights of Columbus. Uh, Knights back, of Columbus. Gosh, yeah. Knights on uh, bikes, back. dude. I remember my Knights on bikes. <laughs> We're going to their rally in August. There'll be a thousand people there. And then the Catholic, Catholic Cross Bears meet 100 miles away two days earlier, so we're going to be around, surrounded by Catholic bikers up there this, this August in Michigan. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So that, you know, we joined, I joined uh, around 2008 or nine. So around the same time, you know, both journeys are going on, obviously, at the same time. So uh, great experience. I think one thing that it's helped me, well, the first thing was going to both the Tampa and Jacksonville conferences back in 2013 ish, 2014, right in there. You know, I didn't know Catholic men did this, right? Just like you said earlier, I, I didn't know this was even a thing. And it was just an amazing experience. I think there were 1,100 guys in the Jacksonville one the, oh the year that God. I went. Yeah. And and we were on fire. We went with a group of six guys um, up there. And then on the way back, I mean, you know, a two hour drive back to Orlando was just, we were just all on fire. So that's kind of the startings of this whole thing. And then, you know, as each year, this is going to be our fourth annual uh, men's conference, but each year just, you know, putting this on, you know, learning from the guys who also help with it. We have a lot a great uh, parish captain network and all the different parishes throughout the diocese that help promote the conference. You know, just learning, you know, from those guys, learning about different men's ministries, learning about different other ministries as well has been, you know, fantastic. I, I think this has been you know, again, this and the Knights Columbus have both been, you know, a big part of my life here the last you know, 10 years. And it, it lets you know, um, you know, there's just men, I think, today are lonely. There's no one that they can really open up with and really talk with. They're fractured. Families are separated geographically or whatever. <clears throat> they really have a problem finding someone that they can really open up with and just say, look, I'm facing these kind of things. Do you have those kind of men in your life? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so part of that young adult group from many years ago is now our Catholic family life group <laughs> at our parish. So we have a good, you know, good set of couples. And then as part of that group, we, we've sp- split off and formed a men's uh, a men's group at our parish as well uh, about two years ago and we've got you know 20 to 25 men on a regular basis there now where we meet every other week uh, on a sunday and it's where? great where and, do you meet uh, and what do you do Ho- holy redeemer uh, catholic church but yeah. i mean where, yeah. where do you meet? you meet at the church what time of day what do you do yeah, yeah. So we started off just meeting at different homes. So I'd, I'd had the guys over at my house for a while, a couple of guys, one one guy's single, so he would have us over at his house. So back in the day, we started off doing it like on a Friday night or a Saturday morning, either at a restaurant or somebody's house. But yeah, now we do it at the parish. There's a social hall we have and we rent, um, you know, sort of reserve the social hall there. 
eat over lunch on a oh, well, Sunday afternoon. Oh, a lot. So it's a, it's a lunch. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a little light lunch um, uh, noon on Sunday. So that's when we get together. So anybody, so it, there's no set time. You can do it at seven in the morning. That's uh, right. You can do it any any time anywhere. But you talked about this when people come back from the men's conference. You said we were on fire, but that fire will go out real quick. You know how to, you know how you, you know, uh, get rid of a fire is you take the logs. You just put the, take kick the logs apart. And the fire will just become, you know, glowing embers. But the way you start a fire, you ever Boy Scout? You know how you start a fire? Oh yeah. It takes three logs, and a bunch of t- kindling. Uh, but men need you know, it's those logs bent together in that kind of mm-hmm. different way that, that you can do it. But it's the air, it's the embers, it's the fire. But men, the the fire will go out if those if those logs aren't uh, uh, leaning on each other in some way. That's right. That's so, right. so when men come from a men's conference, that fire is going to go out as soon as the logs get kicked aside. But the key is then the small men's group is really that's right. where it's at. That's right. And that's what we're promoting, right? We're promoting go back to your parish, get involved, start a men's group if there's not one. If there's not if there one, how do, they, one, how do they start one? Do they go to you for help? Yeah, yeah. We actually do have resources to, uh, to help out. Um, we actually have a nice little seven step program that we give you. It's a nice little checklist to get it started. You know, it doesn't take much to get it going. There's plenty of resources out there. We started with crossing the goal back in the day. That was our, our first season. You know, we, we kind of went through that, that program, the, our father series, mm-hmm. and that was fantastic, but it's just, it's easy to get started. There's lots of resources. You know, you start with just a few, few guys that, you know, and you grow from there. Yeah. It takes three men to start it. That's right. And, and then you think, oh, no one's going to show up. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is it will inspire people. All you got to do is, is let people know the Holy Spirit will, will will send them. Don't be oh, afraid. Oh yeah, to know absolutely. When up. we when we got started, it was two or three of us, and like I said, now we're up to in the twenties uh, on a regular basis, and there's probably more than that that come periodically. So, yeah, it just it just takes getting started and and getting a good nucleus, and it grows from and there. And have some fun, guys. You know, I used to go to men's groups when I was younger, and they go like, like if you showed up and you. And you didn't have a problem before you got there. They made sure you had a problem before you left. Like, they figure out what's wrong in your life. No, go there and 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 affirm each other and challenge each other and, and mobilize with each other. We're talking with Willie Alvarado. He is one of the, the founders and leaders of the Rise Up Men's Conference in Orlando, taking place place March 23rd. Uh, starts about get there early for breakfast at what time? Seven? Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Yep. And then most and then most of you guys, it's a good, big chance for you to go to confession too during the conference. And it ends at what time? Three? You said. Yeah, mass one with mass that starts around two ish. And you're gonna have that. You're gonna have that rookie Justin Fatika there. We are Justin Fatika, and then also one of these uh, days he's gonna punch me out because I always call him a rookie. One of these days he's gonna find me and just punch me out. (laughs) Yeah, he's hard as nails, right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Love that guy. Uh, So uh, yeah, but also for those who have been the last three years, uh, Father Ben is a a great young priest there at Holy Family. He's been our MC the last three years. He's doing a main talk this year, and he's fantastic as well. Well, So we got Father Ben and Justin. Maybe you can connect me with Father. We'd, we'd, we'd love to interview him. So we're talking yeah. with Willie Alvarado. We want to remind you guys to go to our YouTube channel, The Bear Wozniak. It's W-O-Z-N-I-C-K YouTube channel. And subscribe to the radio show. The you know Millions of people listen to it on EWTN all over the world. Even the shout out to the people in Belarus, Russia, that I think get it by shortwave radio and all the podcast apps. But the coolest thing is when you can go to our YouTube channel and actually watch uh, the interview. And if you subscribe to our newsletter, I mean, if you subscribe to the to the YouTube channel, uh, the more action we get there, the more YouTube helps us evangelize. We invite you to go there. Uh, thank you, Willie, for being being our my adventure guide uh, today, co-adventure guide. And until next week, uh, from Waikiki, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.